Hello, my name is Chris Zukas, and I'm the Managing Director of the Zukas Consulting Group, a federal prison consultancy specializing in prison preparation, resolution of in-prison matters, and reentry success. Today, I want to talk about Metropolitan Correctional Center New York, which is also known as MCC New York, um, and I have also seen it referenced as MCC Manhattan. Um, the technical name is Metropolitan Correctional Center New York. So MCC New York is a federal prison in New York uh, that houses primarily pretrial detainees. So these are federal criminal defendants who have been charged but not yet convicted of federal crimes. The facility also houses a smaller number of sentenced inmates, um, some of which are awaiting final designation to the facility where they'll serve their time. There's also a, a small work cadre of inmates who remain there to help with prison operations. So MCC New York uh, houses both male and female detainees and prisoners, um, obviously in different areas of the facility. Uh, it is an administrative security prison, which means that it houses detainees and inmates of all security levels. So they have different wings in which, or different wings and floors in which the inmates reside based on their security level, um, and also along their sentenced or not sentenced status. It currently houses 609 male and female inmates. It is part of the Bureau of Prisons Northeast Region. Uh, it is located within the Southern District of New York, the federal district for SDNY. Um, so most detainees who are there are pending trial in the Southern District of New York, specifically the U.S. District Court. Uh, it is a medical care level two facility and also a mental health care level two facility. Uh, this means that uh, detainees and or inmates at the facility, um, th they can have some medical problems that require periodic uh, physician review and care, um, but not anything incredibly serious. So for example, it's fairly typical at a medical care level two facility for healthy inmates, inmates suffering from mild conditions like uh, type one and type two diabetes, high blood pressure, and other conditions that can be maintained uh, through physician contact on a, let's call it a semi-regular basis. So uh, they need to see a physician once every six months or so. So MCC New York was opened in 1975. It's 12 stories tall. Uh, it uh, has held a number of high profile uh, detainees uh, throughout the years. For example, uh, Gambino crime family bosses John Gotti and Jackie D'Amico. Um, it has also held numerous terrorists. It held El Chapo. Um, one of the more kind of unfortunate incidents at the institution was actually uh, Jeffrey Epstein's uh, suicide, uh, where he had hung him. I believe he was he had hung himself. Um, but there are a number of other incidents at the facility as well. For example, I believe it was in 2019 uh, that the um, uh, various social support agencies came in, bring in food. Um, I think really what they're focused on was that the conditions were so bad because the power was out for such a long time at the facility that you had like the Salvation Army and other organizations were actually coming in and were bringing blankets and jackets and clothing for the inmates. Um, that was probably the, one of the more notable recent incidents at the facility. Um, so inmate housing. So inmates are housed in one of 10 housing units. Um, two of the housing units each have 20 person dormitories while the other eight consist of two person cells. Uh, in addition, there's also a special housing unit, um, which, you know, call it what you want to call it, but it's solitary confinement. Um, that's where inmates who are in protective custody, uh, inmates who have been in trouble at the facility and are being housed pending investigation or who are placed there because of disciplinary segregation reasons. Um, inmates do have access to health services, psychology services at the facility. Um, there is no residential drug abuse treatment program, um, but the facility does offer the drug education class and the non-residential drug abuse treatment program. So your drug education class is the 40 hour uh, it's just a, a, a basic class uh, that all inmates who have a history of substance abuse are required to take. The non-residential non uh, drug abuse treatment program uh, is a nine-month long program uh, that goes through kind of the, the knowledge 
component of the, the drug treatment for the BOP. Um, so it, this is a non-residential and it does not offer the year off the sentence that the RDAP program does. Um, inmates at the facility do have access to a leisure library and a law library. Um, there is no Unicor at the facility, um, but there is a commissary at the facility. So inmates, who inmates and detainees who receive funds um, or who work at the facility, such as the work cadre inmates, are able to spend their money on things such as uh, radios, MP3 players, various food items, various clothing items, and the like. Um, visitation at the facility. So visitation is held between 8 a.m. and 2.30 p.m., um, except on federal holidays in which visitation is held, or sorry, also held between 8 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Um, this is based on the inmates assigned um, housing unit. So right now, uh, visitation is on Mondays for 9 South and the SHU. Um, for B and A units, it's also held at the same time. Um, on our website, you can, prisonerresource.com, you can find uh, the actual visitation policies, which we, we repost um, every time the Bureau of Prisons changes the visitation policies. Note that due to COVID, um, there are differing regulations, and this, is, this seems to be a fluid, uh, an influx situation. So be aware that the status of visitation can change rather quickly. Um, like we said, I think it's about it. Um, if you're looking for additional information on MCC New York, that is Metropolitan Correctional Center New York, please go to prisonerresource.com slash federal hyphen prisons. Again, that is prisonerresource.com slash federal hyphen prisons. Uh, there you can read our profile, our comprehensive profile on MCC New York, which includes all the basic information, such as uh, where is it located? Uh, how do you write an inmate there? What are the programs available? What are the housing units and the housing unit structures like? Um, one thing that we're particularly proud of is that we've managed to obtain the visitation policies for the institution. So that would be the visitation supplement specific to MCC New York. Also up on MCC New York's page, we also have the legal visitation policies for attorneys. Additionally, we have the admission, orientation, admission and orientation handbook for inmates who are uh, either sentenced there or detainees at the facility. Uh, we include the PREA audit report. So that's the Prison Rape Elimination Act annual audit report. And this is a report, it's honestly, it's not as helpful as it could be, but it does detail uh, the most recent PREA audit findings, um, which goes into you know, what are the areas of concern at the facility? What are the number of actual reported sexual assault instances or accusations, along with how many were substantiated and other quite interesting background there. Uh, we do have a Spanish visitation regulation section up as well. So if you speak Spanish uh, and read Spanish, you'll be able to see that in your native language. Uh, and finally, we have the MCC New York commissary list. So you can see what inmates at the facility can currently buy, what it costs, and how it works. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Again, my name is Chris Zukas, and I'm the managing director of the Zukas Consulting Group. If you have any questions about any federal prison matters, please feel free to reach out. Our website, again, is prisonerresource.com. That's prisonerresource.com. You can also call us at 843-620-1100. Again, that is 843-620-1100. And we're available via email at info at prisonerresource.com. Again, that is info at prisonerresource.com. Thank you for your time.